Having a Coke with you is even more fun than going to St. Sebastian, Irun, Ondai, Biarritz, Bayonne, or being sick to my stomach on the Travesera de Gracia in Barcelona. Partly because in your orange shirt you look like a better, happier St. Sebastian. Partly because of my love for you. Partly because of your love for yogurt. Partly because of the fluorescent orange tulips around the birches. Partly because of the secrecy our smiles take on before people in statuary. It is hard to believe when I'm with you that there can be anything as still, as solemn, as unpleasantly definitive as statuary when right in front of it, in the warm New York four o'clock light. One need never leave the confines of New York to get all the greenery one wishes. I can't even enjoy a blade of grass unless I know there's a subway handy or a record store or some other sign that people do not really regret life. It is 12.10 in New York and I am wondering if I will finish this in time to meet Norman for lunch. Ah, uh, lunch. I think I am going crazy. What would my terrible hangover and the weekend coming up? We are drifting back and forth between each other like a tree breathing through its spectacles. Frank O'Hara was a, a, one of the most engaging and graceful human beings I've ever met. He had an incredible amount of energy and um, a great attentiveness to a great many things. We'd walk down the street with him, none of us would shut up. I mean, we'd walk straight for an hour, and we'd talk about a lot of things in history and literature and art and government and things like that. I moved in with Frank, not intending to move in with him, uh, in the uh, summer of 1955. Uh, I just I came to stay while, while I was looking for a place of my own, and I ended up staying with him for like close to 10 years. Frank uh, started selling postcards at the Museum of Modern Art shop. And uh, he did that because I believe a Matisse show was on at the time, and it was the only way he could get to see the Matisse show free day after day after day. And they didn't pay very much. And he was supplementing his income with uh, reviews for art news. And he was writing poetry. He got on very well at the, at the museum. He was very young at that time. Let's see, what was he, about 26, 27? And people liked de Kooning and, and Klein. If they came to the museum, they always looked him up. So they were always going up to his office, and they were the leading artists of that period. And that period was a very magical one. 